Welcome back to Second Breakfast. The lesson of 2023 is to go outside your comfort zone. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's to go outside. <laughs> no, certainly not. Not in this ridiculous... It's 107 degrees out today. I was like, I don't know where this is going. Maybe. Well, maybe that's the message of this movie, though, is to go outside. Yeah? Of the sewer. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> this movie was incredible. It so was. We, this, is sort of, uh, this is sort of a sister episode to our discussion about uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse a couple months ago. Good job of getting that title right. I can never keep it straight. <sighs> I don't know. I'm, I'm like 50-50 that I even got all those I'm, words right. I'm going with it. I think if we sound confident, no one will know. So that episode was <laughs> us going a little bit outside our comfort zone, watching an animated movie that we, mm-hmm. haven't, we haven't been up on our Spider-Man lore in a while. Certainly not. And we loved it. We thought that mm-hmm. was pretty dazzling. Yeah, check that episode out. It was fun. This movie, for me, blew that out of the water. Yeah, yeah. And it was pretty darn good. I have a working understanding of the turtles. <laughs> I was a boy in the early 2000s. They're on my radar, but it wasn't it wasn't any big deal. I me. have like no understanding of the turtles. I know that they are turtles. I know that they're teenagers, and I know that they eat pizza. That's genuinely my only knowledge of TMNT lore. And having seen the movie? That's most of it. Sure. <laughs> so this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Mm-hmm. And the first point that we want to talk about here is animation and art style. Yeah. Because if Spider-Verse was a breath of fresh air, an exciting shot in the arm for animation, Mutant Mayhem is a revolution. Mm. Genuinely, I, I can't believe how up I am on this movie. We have to start with this, the art style, the art style, this glorious, messy, asymmetrical, expressive character design yeah it was fantastic it was so i mean i remember like the reason we saw this was because we could see this coming through in the trailer we were like we could see this like painterly like interesting hand drawn hand painted at least it appears that way art style and that was so exciting and refreshing compared to the just lifeless animated movies you see that one art style we've seen for 15 years from pixar Uh uh-huh yeah my my jaw literally dropped the first time (laughs) i saw this trailer and that doesn't happen to me it doesn't Mm -hmm. happen to anyone outside of cartoons Mm -hmm. but my jaw actually dropped a little right this was so interesting and it felt so fresh so we went into this with such high hopes not really expectations just hopes and the, the expressiveness of the whole world, the consistency and uniqueness of the art style, but specifically in the faces, the way mm. everything looked molded and crafted out of clay to further characterization, mm-hmm. the way it was all the same kind of weird, but also so individual, Yes, the way it, it feels painterly, it feels scratchy and almost drawn on a piece of notebook paper. But on top of that, layered on all of that kind of flat, beautiful coloring, on top of that, you have the lighting. You yeah, have this great uh-huh. lighting engine on top of all of these almost more static layers of color and description mm-hmm. almost. You have this soft neon lighting that felt like it was sizzling or bleeding across the screen. Yeah. And in every moment of the movie, there's a sense of the hand made. Yes, totally. Yeah. Spider-Verse was exciting and beautiful and dazzling to look at, but every shot of... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem has artistry in it. Totally. You can see the scrawls and squiggles. You can see, the, the it, there's almost this feeling of, the, you, you can sense the pen to paper texture on every surface and motion. Mm-hmm. Whether it's the scratchiness of light, you see almost a scribble effect that's bouncing between a yes. couple different shots of it. Like you're yes. layering individual animated cells on it. There's all of that scratchiness and movement to everything in this movie. Mm. And because everything feels so frenzied and alive, it almost feels like the exact moment of creation. Mm, okay. It feels like that moment of drafting when you're drawing something out quick from memory, like when you're writing down a dream so you don't forget it. Mm, it's, yes. it's gonna be messy, it's not gonna be perfect, but you're so excited. Right. There's there's a scrappiness to it. And I think that not only is that just like beautiful to look at and interesting from like a person who's interested in the creative process, but it works well for the story that's being told and for the characters. The characters are these, you know, these scrappy teenagers who are sort of trying to like survive in this, you know, in this tough world that they live in where they have to be, you know, live in secret and can't be out in the human world because they're these weird mutants. (laughs) And so there is a scrappiness to their existence and their characters, but they're also, they're quick on their feet and they're creative, which is which matches the art style. I like that you brought up the lighting too. I think that it's almost this like 
Caravaggio-esque, like yeah. harsh light and darks um, throughout because they're often usually only out at night in, in the city, you know, with these like bright city lights and like really dark shadows. And I think that drama suits the teenagers uh, the, the, the turtles as well because they're teenagers and everything feels dramatic when you're a yeah. teenager and the way that they are interacting with things and going about their lives and uh you know having these different things happen to them and the way they react is like that beautiful teenage way where it is really dramatic and it's like life altering world ending but it's also like goofy and stupid and trivial because teenagers flip so like fluidly between right. the serious and the trivial um th that's how they are and i think the lighting and the the animation style suits all of those things really well yes it it bottles that excitement or euphoria of the feeling of writing down and i rushing to write down a great idea you just had it reminds me of the comics and of course the turtles have a huge history in yeah. the comics and uh -huh. a lot of those people were involved i caught little easter eggs there were homages to some of the original creators mm -hmm. but i've seen some some of the comics i like when you look in the back they'll have a couple pages of the original pencils yes. this is mostly if it's like uh, the, the same person does the pencils, the layouts, and then the inks on top of it. Uh -huh. And almost every single time, I prefer the pencils. Hmm, mm -hmm. I like the scratchiness, the imperfectness of it. Before it's layered over with a steady hand and perfect inking, I like the scratchiness of composition, mm -hmm, the yeah. messiness, the excitement. I like the energy, the the texture of that. Right. And this movie had that. It's it so like, apparent here. Yeah. Uh -huh. It felt like the loose pencils of a great comic. Yeah. We're not getting the actual pencils, but it still has that feeling. Right. The, 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 the little warm fuzzies that you get from looking at the mm -hmm. pencils, it comes through in this movie. And nothing here felt rushed. Nothing mm -hmm. here feels like a first draft. I mean, it's unbelievable to look at. Right. It's not like it's like bad on purpose or messy on purpose or unfinished. Like it's incredibly... Um, uh, uh, it, polished it, it, polished yes yes exactly the production design is incredible but uh -huh. it retains that passion and excitement of a first draft mm -hmm. of a little character sketch on a napkin mm -hmm. it's it's really mm -hmm. exciting to watch definitely and in context th in context this is a jaw-dropping departure from modern animation even the trailers mm. we we saw in front of this movie for other animated movies aimed at younger <laughs> audiences. They all look terrible. I mean, we're falling asleep watching yeah, a lot of these they things. They all looked like the same movie and they all looked just dreadful and soulless. And it is true that this movie has is less varied in its visual style than something like Spider-Verse. Of course, But yeah. I think this one style is better than any of the styles featured in something like Spider-Verse. Mm, yeah. It's layered, it's kinetic, it's constantly exciting, and it feels personal i also appreciated like com if we're comparing to the spider verse i think the the simplicity of this story i think is much I, I liked that more than the spider verse not that i was like necessarily confused in the spider verse i mean they're both movies for kids but i mean the, the point of spider verse in its defense is it's meant to be about the the multiverse and expanding beyond just the one spider-man story we talked all about that in our episode it was really fun and it's done well but i there's something nice about a simple story i feel like we don't get those anymore <laughs> i feel like there's so there's so much of an effort to like subvert and rework and reframe and change and uh, you know, and, and i sequelize and and ugh, yes i mean and often i do like call out for and, and ask for subversion and changing and doing something new but i mean this was a story that i, I had you know in different variations heard before underdogs who you know <laughs> are you know adopted at birth and they rise to become this great thing or whatever and they take over this thing that's destroying the city and then all is saved and they get to be normal kids again like pretty like standard story but it was just done really well it's 90 minutes mm -hmm. of rock solid story yeah every mm -hmm. it's a simple story executed at the highest possible level mm -hmm. and i totally agree i have developed a hunger for that as well right and this this was just so satisfying and i think it works because even though it's a simple like you've heard it before a story what they're doing that's new is doing amazing animation work like that elevates it beyond just like your boring basic kids movie yes and let's talk about the turtles for a second because yeah. i don't want to gloss over that oh my gosh they feel shockingly genuine they're so sweet <laughs> as, as both brothers uh -huh. the interplay between them and as teenagers you spoke to that already yeah but there's a fantastic chemistry between them all Mm -hmm. It's actually four young actors 
there are stars in other roles, in almost cameo roles, yeah. uh, filling out the cast. But these main four, there's a chemistry to them. They're young. They have the same energy. And the banter between them isn't just a clean, separated volley of canned lines and pop culture references. Yeah, like lines. Like when, like when they feel like lines, that's the worst because that's not how dialogue happens between people. <laughs> Especially an excited young group of friends. Right. They uh-huh. talk all over each other. Oh, They're yeah. usually three people talking. Yeah. And then a punchline or something funny kind of rises out of that din. Yeah. Like it does in real life, in like real it life. did in high school. Uh-huh. There's a naturalism to the dialogue that I think so the movie as much as the animation did yes like you, you come in the door for the animation but i was really impressed by the script it, once we were there yeah and and their dialogue felt very like of our time like it felt very contemporary and maybe this is not fair of me to judge because i'm a millennial and i don't know how gen z <laughs> talks but i think i know how gen z talks and this feels right like it doesn't feel like a 50 year old 50 year old man trying to write kids dialogue like it feels like yes how kids really do talk it has a glorious immaturity. Yeah. There's that enthusiasm, the wonder, the naivete you, you spoke to before, mm-hmm. that heightened emotion of being a teenager. Yeah. It all just feels accurate. It feels dialed in to this stage of life. And mm-hmm. I wasn't even a turtle growing up, but I can relate <laughs> to this. Basically, if you were a turtle growing up, send us an email. It's like at breakfastpot at gmail.com. Sure, drop tell it us, in the YouTube comments. Tell us how this worked. <laughs> I think you. this is the first Seth Rogen project since Superbad to remind me of how good he was in Superbad. The, yes. Like the insights into adolescence and insecurity that that movie had. Right. This reminded me of that. I feel like Seth Rogen has kind of become this like meme, like this like this joke, uh, like in terms of his humor style and how it's kind of like we talked so about. so influential. Well, and we've talked about how it's just become this like kind of cringy, like ironic, bad millennial humor, right? Interesting. And now I've, so like, but it, this was not that at all. Like another thing that convinced us when we saw this trailer mm-hmm. was the humor because we saw the animation, we were in love with it. But if it's a bad script, I don't care how pretty the animation is. I don't want to watch it. But when we saw the the trailer, the few of the jokes that were in the trailer, I was like, those are like actually funny. Yes. Like it's not the cringy, ironic humor. It's like, again, it's, it's actually very funny. The um, movie is shockingly funny and more importantly, consistently funny. Yes. <laughs> the jokes about the milking machine. Oh my God. Hysterical. It's the funniest thing. It's and very like, funny. That's funny to a kid, the idea of a turtle being milked. And it's funny to an adult because it sounds like kind of gross and sexual and like, right. a, like a really creepy, like funny way. And it was and very again, funny. That's the sweet spot for super bad. Exactly. But it also really connected with me on an emotional level. Because mm. there, there are evergreen feelings and crises of mm-hmm. adolescence that the movie speaks to. The f- wanting to fit in mm-hmm. at school, wanting to be accepted in the world or yeah. within your family, mm-hmm. getting the approval of your family, finding your passion in life. Mm-hmm. It hits these really well. Yeah. And it balances mm-hmm. that with that sort of crude, genuine humor <laughs> and naturalistic dialogue yeah. with the most exciting animation I can remember seeing. Right. And beyond the like animation style, like the creature design of... That's exactly where I was going oh, next. You're so welcome. It's like I read your mind. <laughs> Episode 273. We're getting pretty good at this. <laughs> like the creature design, like the turtles, it's pretty like... Uh, I, there's not much to say about the design of the turtles. They're humanoid turtles. But What about the baby turtles? Oh my, the, little, the flashback oh my god the little baby <laughs> turtles were so cute but i was thinking more of uh the fly superfly and, and superfly and all the other mutants like so interesting looking and so well done i loved superfly i loved the slow reveal we don't see what he looks like until like halfway through the movie and he's like hinted at and he's very fun and and all the and the weird rhinoceros thing and that weird bug thing and the and the weird little, like all the different little creatures, they were so interesting. They're inventive yeah. and exciting. And with this art style, they're, I mean, they are astounding to look at. Superfly mm-hmm. is more metal mm-hmm. and visually interesting than ninety percent of horror villains. Yeah, truly. He's fan- and the way that they do that slow drip reveal of him, uh-huh. the way they drop the camera down low to make him look even more intimidating. Mm-hmm. There's attitude in every inch of his character design, every muscle and mandible, those little extra arms he has coming out of his and belly. I've, and I've never seen anything like that. Yes. Like I've seen other flies and big flies and big bug villains, but I've never seen one quite like that. And I thought it was so refreshing. Again, they're doing things that are new and fresh, but in this like simple story that we've heard before. They're, and I, I love that. They're treating it with respect. Uh-huh. 
Like I- I- Ice Cube is the voice actor for Superfly. <laughs> he does such a good job. <laughs> the style and venom that he layers into every line of this character. I mean, just looking at looking at Superfly as a villain in a movie, mm-hmm. taking out the qualifiers of kids movie, mm-hmm. animated movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah, he is. He's got depth. He's cool. He's scary. He's got multiple awesome forms as he Mm. evolves and mutates through the movie. He's got a cool car, a great voice. He's got charm. He's genuinely magnetic on screen. This is one of the better villains I've seen this year. (laughs) He was so good. He was really, really fun. Yeah. And maybe capitalizing on that theme of people making a movie and Mm. treating this as a work of art that is worthy of respect and genuine effort. You're not punting because it's for kids. Right. We have to talk about the score. In this movie. (laughs) The score was fantastic. This is the most hard-hitting, fist-pumping, badass auditory experience of the year. And who who did the score, Kim? This score. I didn't know this until the credits, and I laughed out loud when it came up in the We were so amazed. This score was done by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, Mm -hmm. who did Social Network, Gone Girl, uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yeah, They have been lighting up movies the last 10 or 15 years Mm -hmm. it goes so hard and like all of their other scores this isn't just great to listen to as an album Mm -hmm. which i have multiple times since we got out of the theater (laughs) of course but in context it pumps up every character introduction and every fight sequence to an incredible level it's so fun to watch genuinely this score hits as hard as the dragon tattoo score (laughs) it's wild stuff it's pretty great but it speaks to that underlying sincerity and passion that Mm. we noted before Mm -hmm. in the animation in the other performances exactly no one is just making a cartoon and half-assing it this is art this is a movie and i will hold it up against any other work of art this year right i mean it's the joke about about tarzan right like phil collins didn't have to go that hard for the tar for the tarzan score but he did and it was so worth it not the score the soundtrack it was so worth it and it and it takes the movie to a whole other level i i love that movie like 50 percent because of that score and the exact same thing is happening here like they didn't have to do this amazing score i think the movie still would have been interesting and successful without it but it's just that extra level of care and artistry that I really appreciate and that I feel like is hard to come by. And that brings us to the MVP of this movie, Splinter. Oh, Splinter, the, the rat voice, dad. Yes. <laughs> if the, you're not aware, the rat dad. <laughs> the voice acting performance that Jackie Chan gives oh in this movie my God. as mm-hmm. Splinter, the turtle's dad, who, yes, is a big rat. <laughs> the genuine love and heartache in every line that he delivers here, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. there's a concern there's mm-hmm. a yearning across generations. There's the quiet fear that you get when, when your kids go out into the world. Yes. When, mm-hmm. when someone you love has to fend for themselves and you're worried that they can't do it or they don't know enough. Yeah. There's a scene where he tries to bring the outside world to them. Oh my gosh. Because Heartbreaking. Because they're in love with the human world because mm-hmm. that's the fresh, exciting, colorful thing that they can't experience because they're trapped in the sewers. Yeah, they've been in the sewers for 15 years. They want to explore so the dad throws a human world pizza party so cute and this might be the right time to ask (laughs) did you cry at all during this movie i didn't but that was where i felt the most like crying because i'm 28 (laughs) and i cried three times during teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem what were the other two they were all splinter related okay there's uh a moment where you think he's gonna die at the end and then he saves the day yeah i mean obviously you know the, yeah. They save the day at the end here. But yeah. Splinter is just a really good dad. Well, hold on. What was the third one? I don't know. <laughs> this movie got me more than once. And most of okay. that was Jackie Chan as Splinter. It was just incredible voice acting work. Mm-hmm. The bottom line here is that this was a stunning movie. Yeah. Probably the most impressive and excited. I mean, I got more excited. The most impressive and exciting animated film <laughs> I have ever seen. Yeah. I mean, I know there were landmark watershed moments in animation when we were growing up. People always Mm -hmm. talk about when they saw the first Toy Story, which revolutionized moving us to 3D and more computer generated. And I understand how impressive that was. It's also one of the better scripts ever made. Yeah. But this kind of feels like that for me. I know. Like, I'm trying to think about when was the last time I saw an animated movie and was genuinely moved by it and felt like I want to see that again. I think that might have been like Frozen like frozen one right and like before that tangled but but like but like that's it like there's been nothing for the past like 10 years not only from a story and a performance angle but it also feels like the field of animation has advanced here yeah we've moved the goalposts now yes right it's like it was like 
it was like Disney did Frozen and it was wildly successful. And they were like, great, let's make a bunch more of those. And I don't just mean like more Frozen movies. I mean more like movies with like the same style of animation, just like like a, about the same things. Like again, like Frozen is really well done and I'm not harping on Frozen at all. I think it's really well done. But like it was like the lesson from that was just make more of the same and not keep upping the ante, keep experimenting, keep doing new things. Because I feel like Frozen was doing something a little bit new with like the Disney animation world and then like nothing has changed since then There's, until you get stuff like this and the Spider-Man movies. Yes, after the huge success of some of the movies you named, you get variations on a theme. Mm -hmm. this felt like it was breaking the mold Mm -hmm. it really blew both of us away yeah i mean we couldn't we don't look for holes but i can't find any problems with this movie it's passionately crafted it's Mm -hmm. immaculate it's exciting it's loud it's big and colorful it was just great yeah i loved this movie i also loved april the 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 human character they meet like she's got a great arc she was she was voiced by an adult actress but like she was we just saw in the bear yeah yeah. she's great there she's great yeah um and but she was like really just really interesting and funny and smart but not in a like unrealistic inhuman way like she was a normal teenage girl who had these insecurities but like had these big dreams and is able to achieve them and it's very sweet and and they didn't make her annoying they didn't play her as this like annoying shrew where the boys get to have all the fun she was great right she is she was she felt so natural uh in that in that kind of rapport with the four of them yeah she was was just a a great movie yeah i wish this would come out when i was young I know. But yeah, that's that's our lesson this year. Is just <laughs> if a trailer looks good or if the creative team looks good, just go support something. Right. Because mm-hmm. every time we've left our comfort zone this year, we've been so rewarded. Right. Like, I think me three years ago wouldn't have bothered to go see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. This is just another way for us to advertise the Alamo season pass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but do it with your local theater. Like, yeah. If you want to like be seeing more movies, it's it's so dumb to not get one of these past things because you see two movies and you've paid for it. You so take a chance. It's yep. yeah. Then you get to see interesting, fun, experimental movies that you may not have spent money on otherwise. If so. you liked our coverage of the Turtles movie, if you liked our coverage of the Spider Verse movie a couple <laughs> months ago, we have almost two hundred and seventy five episodes. Yeah, that something we've done, like that, uh-huh. including a bunch of bonus episodes available over on our Patreon. We have a whole say. back catalog of all sorts of off the wall or classic works of art that we cover and discuss and analyze and talk about. It's two dollars a month and you can get the whole back catalog and a new bonus episode every month. A link to have all of it in one clean little feed right there in your podcast player. We're also Second Breakfast Pod on YouTube. If you're Mm -hmm. listening to us here, we always have hand-selected images running in the background of whatever we're talking about. If we're talking about a game, we have the gameplay in the background. Mm -hmm. It's all done up nice for you. (laughs) We're also on Instagram at Second Breakfast Pod, and we'll have a brand new episode for you on Friday. Yes. Thank you for being here. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.